That's why on a day where, you know, this was a, a, an interesting week legally, Roe versus Wade was reversed by the U.S. Supreme Court, sending back to states the decision of what their position should be on abortion. And it's, it's uh, I, sometime I'll talk to you about it legally as a lawyer. It's a fascinating legal uh, road that this country's been on and that this country continues to be on. Uh, you, you know, there, there was... Um, uh, how are we doing time-wise? Do you all have five minutes for me to talk about this? Okay, let's, uh, let's go back in history for a moment. Um, 1860 through 1865, lots of big stuff was happening. It's called, in the U.S., it's called the Civil War. And in the Civil War, a number of problems happened among uh, that that happened as a result of the war and those problems included um, addiction and the addiction uh, that's notable at least historically includes uh, to opiates painkillers alcohol and pornography And after the war, there was a friend of um, a fella who was addicted to those things, and he committed suicide. I believe he committed suicide. Pretty sure he committed suicide. And his friend said, ah, that suicide happened because of these addictions. And so the friend joined with the Young Men's Christian Association, YMCA of New York City, and got passed laws that were anti-pornography laws. The anti-pornography laws included laws that said you can't ship through the U.S. postal mail anything that is basically sexual in nature. So it meant you couldn't send pornography, and that includes any writings that were pornographical writings. That would even include letters between spouses. But it also included the limited birth control that was there at the time. And those laws stayed on the books for quite a while. Some of them got repealed, but some did not. Connecticut kept theirs on the books even into the 1960s. And so in the 1960s, along comes the birth control pill. And in Connecticut, the birth control pill is illegal under these laws. So in New Haven, Connecticut, which is uh, where Yale University is, the... Planned Parenthood opens a clinic to dispense the pill to women who want it. And there is a woman named Estelle Griswold who is running the Planned Parenthood who in front of like a cop or something dispenses birth control pills to a woman. And Estelle is arrested under the law, and she is found, she pleads guilty, but then appeals it and says the law is unconstitutional. She should be allowed to sell it. So Griswold versus Connecticut goes all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court on the issue of, is, it, is there a constitutional right to birth control? The decision is made by the U.S. Supreme Court, yes, there is. It's part of the right of privacy. The problem is the U.S. Constitution doesn't have a right of privacy. So the court says, well, it's implied. It's inferred. You can't have a lot of the rights that are in the Constitution if you don't have a right of privacy. 
And so the right of privacy is used in Griswold versus Connecticut to say you're allowed to have access to birth control. And the state cannot step into a person's life and say no. Several years later, Roe versus Wade comes in. And in Roe versus Wade, the argument is Griswold versus Connecticut says there's a right of privacy in reproductive matters that should extend to a right to abortion. The Supreme Court narrowly says yes, but there's no real basis for that either in the Constitution. The Constitution doesn't say that that right exists. The Supreme Court loops it in under Griswold versus Connecticut which is looped in under the anti-pornography laws that were still there on the books from the post-Civil War time. And so Roe versus Wade says, but we've got competing interests here because there is this life form that's got a competing interest. So at what point does the life form's interest overcome the woman's right to choose reproductive issues for herself and they said certainly that line once the baby is viable once the baby could live outside of mom that that point the mom has no competing interest that's greater than the interest of the child so that's what Roe versus Wade said since that time there have been several decisions on it but ultimately now the Supreme Court has said there's no basis for that in the Constitution. They have added to that, uh, Justice Thomas in his concurrence basically says, we probably ought to also revisit issues like uh, contraception and whether or not the state's able to prohibit that. Um, those types of issues are all around us. But as a result of what the U.S. Supreme Court ruled, we're going to have a different legal system when it comes to abortion and childbirthing in America. And I don't care where you are on that issue in terms of what I'm about to say. Whether you're over here or over there, for what I'm about to say doesn't matter. Because what I'm about to say is this. God expects his people to find those who are hurting, to find those who are desperate, and to love them with a selfless love and compassion. And if this means that women are going to be carrying children that they could not have afforded to carry because a number of abortions happen, because the women just can't afford the child, can't afford the medical care, can't afford the, the hospitalization. Even, I mean, heavens, our daughter has great insurance. Our daughter that had twins still costs them like 15 grand to have those babies. There are a lot of people that, that have abortions that don't have the money. And what God's people need to do right now is step up and say, we will do anything we can to help because we're not here just to tell you, hey, you can't do that, now get on down the road. We're here to say, we care about you. We care about your child. We want to help. We are here to do a U-turn in your life and to do a U-turn in the life of that child because God cares, because human beings are made in his image and they have value. And we want to show that, not just say it. And we've got to do that. We've got to do that. I want, I, I want, I want God's people to rise up and, and be seen not as people of no compassion, but as people of ultimate compassion. As people who, who, who seek out those in need and do everything in our power to try to bless and help and love on them.